finally testing the Prusa Core 1 and the last Prusa printer I had in the workshop was the Mark 3 which was a very long time ago and things have definitely changed since then there is a lot of new tech in the world and this printer embodies that first of all this just looks nice it's just a pretty printer and stands out apart from all of those metallic gray injection molded panels and frames that I'm more used to this just looks sleek this printer has a matte black sheet metal outer frame, so use fridge magnets to your heart's content. The door is relatively thin acrylic. Some people like this. I'm on the edge, but it does open like literally all the way. I've heard it can scratch, but nothing for us yet, although it does attract dust quite a bit. You can actually flip the door if you want, so it opens from the left. This is the assembled version. We're also offering the kit version, which is cheaper, but it does require a bit of elbow grease to put it all together. I've heard it takes about eight hours to put the kit totally together. We're impatient, so we got the assembled one to test out, and all you need to do to get this working is put on the display, the rubber feet, a few other little tiny things, devour a bag of gummy bears, and then do the self-test. First thing I want to talk about with this guy is connectivity. Like a lot of printers, it has Wi-Fi to connect to the slicer, and it has a mobile app, and there is also a USB port on the screen, and if you want, you can keep this on LAN mode only. There is an NFC reader at the back of the printer, which you can use with your phone and app to add all of your data for logging in when getting the printer ready for the first time. Regarding the slicer, we normally use Orca Slicer in the office, but I have obviously been using Prusa Slicer again with the Core 1, first time in years actually, and I'm pretty happy with it. Normally, I don't like manufacturer slicers pushing their own models and hosting sites, but because we use printables so much, and the slicer just has a window for printables, I have been more open to using Prusa Slicer for our other printers. Prusa Connect Tool is nice. You can schedule prints if you want to add them to a queue or just go for it and you have a history of all your prints too, just like other printers. You also have all of the basic status info of your printer. You can control the printhead movements, see statistics and edit the settings like whether you want to download pre-release firmware, change the nozzle type and more. So I get why people would want to swap back to Prusa Slicer from using Orca. Prusa Slicer is a great slicer to use with other printers, and lots of us have more than one printer. And I'd say a lot of us, maybe even most of us, use printables as the primary source for your models. And there is also Easy Print. This is pretty cool. You can control your printer wherever you are. You just need an internet connection. Just log into printables, pick something you want to print, and click on Easy Print. You don't have full Prusa Slicer functionality, but this is certainly useful for a lot of people. Going to the printer screen, it's interesting. Whereas most companies just use a touchscreen, this is a bit retro with the additional encoder wheel type thing. I actually don't like the touch interface that much. It's a bit on the smaller side. It's not super sensitive. I actually frequently have to press twice. I'm not that happy with it. The screen, however, does have a massive amount of options on it. There is so much control, and maybe that is actually a bit intimidating for beginners. It's a lot to experience when you're new to this machine, and maybe you're just used to something like an Anycubic screen, which is the complete opposite of this. On the side, you have your spool holder, and the PTFE is perfectly positioned, although because it is on the side, and depending how you have positioned the printer, it's a bit finicky to feed in filament at the beginning, but once the filament has been detected, the motor will grab it, and it feeds seamlessly. I'm more used to a top feeding mechanism. I have actually modded other printers so I can do this, but to each his own. On the opposite side, there is actually space to mod your printer. So maybe you want to add a fume exhaust, another spool holder, or a build plate holder. Pretty cool. Automatic Z offset on this device is awesome, regardless of what I'm printing. And the printer comes with a smooth PEI sheet. And this has great adhesion, although for TPU and PDG, um, it's too good. So I actually printed TPU on this, and it was close to impossible to remove. I had to dump a load of IPA on it and then peel it off, and I'm lucky I didn't damage it. Uh, this is pretty common for Prusa Smooth PEI, so if you are printing PTG or TPU, I'd recommend getting a different build plate for this. Watch out. Uh, but apart from that, the adhesion is great, and the surfaces on this, the first layers, are just perfect. They're super smooth. It's like what you had with a glass plate. Gorgeous. What is cool about the leveling is that when you are 
going to print something, it only probes around the area where the model is. So if you have something small, it only does a small selection of probing points, which is great. Print noise is about average. It's not particularly loud or quiet, but here's what we got. One thing I don't particularly like is the top cover. It's just acrylic with a venting grate. It fits relatively snugly, but it's just weird to remove. So you can place the cover on top, but there are no handles or grips to remove it. You can keep it in place with these little rivets, which improve the seal. But if you need to do some maintenance, then you need to remove like a half dozen of these tiny things and then take off the cover. And I've already lost a few of these rivets. It's just kind of weird. So yeah, that grate is there for if you are printing PLA or another filament that doesn't require a warm chamber. Just open it up if you are. Inside there is a chamber fan too, actually, which are there to ventilate the chamber. So if you need to print PLA, there are thermistors in the chamber. And if the temperature goes too high, the chamber fan activates, keeping the internal temperature at appropriate levels. Not exactly sure why there is a vent as well, if this works perfectly, but that's just what they recommend. There is, however, no active heating on this printer and there is no carbon filter by default. What I do like is that the slicer profiles and printer are set up so that if you are printing ABS or ASA or another high temperature filament, it will wait for the chamber to heat up before starting the printer. Normally printers don't do this so much, they just get straight into the print and then regulate the chamber temperature during printing. You can turn this off completely or just skip it via the interface. Inside there is a cool LED light bar under the bed. The chamber light is bright and there is no issue viewing the inside through the door. There is close to zero space inside the chamber for anything else, but I guess this helps a bit with keeping temperatures inside regulated. Apparently everything that is 3D printed inside the printer is made from PCCF, which is pretty cool. Before I think they use PETG, I never really noticed an issue with that, but I can't say no to PCCF of course, and it just makes sense to have something like that in an enclosed machine. Now, while there is no active heating on this printer, you can get over 50 degrees inside the chamber just from the heaters that are there. But let's see how long heating takes for the hot end, the bed and the chamber. Okay, let's look at the motion system. So obviously this is a core XY design. On the Y axis, we have a linear rods and on the X, we have a linear rail. Prusa don't state a max speed with this printer in their marketing material and you won't find that on our website either. I mean, it's a very vague term anyway because speed varies with filament and with which part of the print the printhead is working on. But to give you an idea of what this printer is capable of in terms of speed, Prisha do have a Benchy code on the USB, which conforms to speedboat rules. So let's give that a shot. The Z has three separate motors and lead screws in a standard middle corner corner screw and rod configuration. So you might think that it has a three point leveling system, but it doesn't. The bed can go up to 115 degrees and the hot end 290. This is in contrast to the general trend these days of higher temperatures on consumer grade devices. Everyone wants to hop on the industrial capabilities bandwagon these days, but Prusa are staying true to what they've done before. 290 degrees in the hot end and 115 on the bed is still more than enough. You can print most nylons with that pretty comfortably. But this printer comes with a high flow CHT style brass nozzle. There is no hardened steel nozzle when you get this, so no abrasive filament testing today. Of course, if you wish, you can upgrade the printer to steel nozzles. And if doing so, all you need to do is unscrew these thumb screws on the side of the print head and screw it out. No hot loosening or tightening necessary. There are no auxiliary fans on this printer and the print head uses a large but still relatively quiet fan with a 360 degree fan duct and man does this printer do overhangs well. Overhangs are like the bane of high speed printing but this printer just destroys every other printer in terms of overhang performance. Just look at this overhang test. 
The extruder is interesting. This is Prusa's next extruder, and it uses a 1 to 10 planetary gear system, and this extruder doesn't use either a dual drive or a hobbed gear. The next extruder uses a large straight cut gear and idler bearings to guide and drive the filament. You might think it has issues with TPU, but it works just fine and surface quality is just superb. Dispensing with a dual drive allows the gear to fully drive the filament. With dual drives, sometimes the filament itself can drive the secondary gear, resulting in flow variance. And dispensing of the hob gear means consistent grip on the filament, even if the filament floats around a bit. This printer doesn't have any fancy AI type features. There is no webcam on this printer to detect spaghetti disasters. What it does have is like a million sensors. So it has two filament sensors, one for just above the extruder and one for when you're putting it in the PTFE tube. It also has a load cell for leveling, and this is actually quite sensitive. It can detect dirty nozzles, and we have had notifications for this. It has five thermistors in it. It has tachometers in the fans, which means you can do proper status detection. So if there is a slow speed on a fan, the printer will detect this and say, oh, hey, there's a problem. And this actually happened just this morning, in fact. So a little bit of filament got caught in the front fan on the print head, and the printer paused to tell us this to say we should clean it, which is really cool, although probably wouldn't have happened had there been a good grill on the fan to begin with. There is also a sensor on the door, which pauses the print if the door is open, which is extremely irritating, and we turned it off immediately. Now, if you want to compare this printer against others, well, let's start with print quality. This scores high. It's better than X1 quality. Colors are bright. Layers are perfectly consistent. There are no overhang issues. Supports are okay. I had to fiddle with the support Z distance at the beginning because some interfaces were stuck to the model. I love the quality on this machine. It just wins. What about speed? Well, this isn't the fastest printer ever. Take that Benchy for instance. 14 minutes is pretty normal, maybe a bit on the slower side even, but that's ensuring high quality surfaces still. And frankly, I personally don't give a damn about this when I get such perfect outer walls. What about user experience and interface? Well, the slicer, awesome. I can't really say anything critical about Prusa slicer. However, the screen, meh, it's a bit small. It's not super responsive to my touch, it's okay. Reliability on this machine so far has been great. The sensors do their job, no false positives from them. Bed adhesion is great, except for the whole TPU PTG thing. Uh, flow is doing well, feeding problems, none. Nozzle clogs, none. Extruder clogs, none. Overhang performance on this is great. It's great surface quality. The only thing I don't like so much is the cover and this little bar thing in front of the tool head, which is impeding your view. What about filament compatibility? Well, that's where this printer falls short a little bit. So as I said before, it has a brass nozzle. It doesn't have hardened steel, so you can print with abrasives by default. Now you can upgrade, that's fine. But when hardened steel has become basically the de facto nozzle material, it's just a little bit disappointing that this doesn't come with an abrasive resistant nozzle as stock. You can upgrade it, yes, but I, I wish it had it. I, I won't. I actually need one. With a max 290 degree hot end and no heated chamber, this printer can print ABS, ASA, nylon for sure, but for something a little tougher like PPS, it's just not doable. I guess Prusa didn't have this in mind when developing. The specs are fine for most people, but if you really want to print high-end, tough materials, maybe this isn't for you. And of course, if you want to print TP or PTG on this printer, you're probably better off changing build plates. And this is going to be a big one for a lot of people. There is no AMS MMU type device in front of me. The MMU3 is technically compatible with the Core 1, but not really optimized. So while it can surely provide good multicolor, it is otherwise hard to compare with other color change devices on the market. And then you need to consider the price. So at a build area of 250 by 220 and a build volume of slightly less than an X1, this is considerably more expensive than similarly sized printers, 
in the shop. The assembled version is 1,359 euro right now, and the kit is 1,049 euro. There is a lot to weigh in here, and I know the price is limiting for a lot of people, but if you want something reliable with great quality and something that you could mod easier than most printers, this one's for you. If you guys have any questions about the Prusa Core 1, you may ask below. And if you didn't know, we also have a Discord server where you can talk to us and everyone else about all things 3D printing. We'll be back with another video soon. So until then, happy printing. Later. Thank mm -hmm. you.